folks, to put fun here. Okay, as you can see there, we've finished our beveling pattern here around our uh, design. We'll put our light back on here. As you can see, we've went all the way around it. It just gives it a nice little contouring there. And all we did was we just took our little... Uh, it, it has a, uh, a name for this. I don't know if it's the camouflage or something like that. I call it a little mushroom there kind of thing. And you just set it there, you hit it, you set it, and you move it over to the next spot, and you just keep going around until you get it all uh, set in there the way you like it. It makes a nice little border around your piece there. Okay, now next thing, we got our logo piece that we're going to put on here. So we wet our leather back down again. And we're going to set out pretty much where we want our our logo to be. And then we're going to trace this outline here with our pen. And then when we go to cut in our design, we're going to use... This is one of our tools that comes with one of those little basic kits there. Uh, this is called a swivel knife. And it's got a nice little blade on the front there. It's got a little piece where you can hold your hand. And the top part swivels around so that you can make your cuts. And you can kind of move it and twist it as you make your cuts there to cut in your design. So once we get our pattern put in there, we're going to get it cut in and then we'll tool it in to give it a little beveling, a little, uh, make it kind of stand out a little bit. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start out tracing it. Now the tracing is not so bad here. You can kind of, You mess up a little bit here and there, it's not a big deal because you can correct it with your cuts. And any missteps you make there, you can also kind of correct that with your beveling. You want to press a little harder when you're doing this, but you don't want to press so hard to where you end up cutting the paper. But you want to just make sure that you can go through and like I said, some of these, the designs, the, the bigger they are the easier they are to trace. And it makes it a lot easier to cut in as well. Okay, so there you can see we got our design there kind of put in and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and trace over it again. Just to get our lines in there good. Like I said, once the uh, Once the paper is not on there, it's a lot easier to trace it in without the paper being on there to kind of want to fold up on you. Now, a lot of people say, well, what about you know, it's just copyright infringement if you're taking this logo. Well, 
if you were going to mass produce these and sell these and things, you may have a copyright problem. Um, for us, you know, we're just making it for our own use, for home, you know, for our own use. So if you're not reselling or redistributing, you don't really have to worry about that. Okay. There you can see we've got our put our light back up here a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to get in there. You can see we got our design stitched in there now or drawn in, traced on there. And now what you want to do is you want to be careful because you want your leather to dry out a little bit before you start cutting because you don't want your knife to uh, dig in and start, you know, burrowing in there and because it is a beveled edge, so once you start to cut there, it will kind of push it out a little bit. And you don't want it bowing out your leather so bad the way you got big bumps there, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off here. And like I said, this is going to take a little bit here, but we're going to start out just to show you how we, we do some of our cuts there. And uh, show you what it's going to look like, and then we'll cut back in when we get our design done here. So I just start at a corner, and like I said, it's kind of hard to see unless you're, you know, you're right here on top of it. And I don't know if you can tell that or not, but it just makes a little cut right down the edge there. So it just bevels your little cut into your design there. And then what I'll do is I'll go from another corner to that corner. Anytime it makes like a little V where they come together, I'll come from one point and start to the next point and end up at the V. Okay, so that's how we get started there. We just go in and we just start making our cuts. If you notice there are swivel there, when we do that round cut, we kind of just go around and twist it around there. And uh, like I said, if you do get one of the little kits there, starting out with the leather stuff, it gives you little uh, practice coasters and these little practice pieces like this to where you can practice your designs on before you do a regular project and ended up messing up a wallet or a belt or something like that. So it gives you uh, little pieces to practice your designs on to get used to using your tools and things like that. Okay guys, when we get this uh, set in there, we're going to get it cut in. We'll come back and show you our beveling process. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, you for fun. Hey, uh, we're continuing on with our leather project here. We've got our, uh, now that we've got our m &P logo, we've got it traced on there. We've got it uh, sketched in with our uh, little swivel knife here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a little beveling tool. And like I said, all these you can pick up on uh, tandyleather.com. And if you buy one of the little basic starter kits, I think they're around $60 for the basic one, I think. Um, 
it comes with all the basic tools, comes with the swivel knife, the little camouflage tool, and some eyelets and some different other tools. This one's a little paring tool. And what it's good for is when you draw the lines and stuff, it just kind of, uh, you can go over it and it just kind of smooths it down. Instead of having the little, uh, so much of it bumped up and stuff, the little paring tool there can kind of smooth it out, the edges there. Like I said, if your leather is too wet when you do it, sometimes it'll, it'll bump it up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our little beveling tool here. I just need some more batteries there starting to flicker on me. <clears throat> and uh, one thing we want to do first is we've got a little hand stamp here. Well, not a hand stamp, but a little basic stamp here. It's got a little cross pistols on there. And it takes a little tool that comes in the back there and you just stamp it on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our little cross guns pattern here. And you can see we get a little cross gun. Now what you want to do is you want to get this in, make sure you get it set on there good. And you want to rock it forward a little bit. So you get a good embedded design there, a good detailed design embedded into it. Okay, that's a, an advantage of our little stamps there that makes it a lot easier. And now what we're going to do is we're going to contour our MEP, kind of give it a little 3D effect there, kind of make it stand out. So we're going to bevel the edges a little bit. Now what I do is I usually start from a corner and just start in and just work my way around. Now you want to go in from the inside out so that the back part of it looks like it's shaded and then the rest of it will stand out, okay? And I'll show you what we're doing here. And you just set it right in that crease there, start at the corner, and you just give it a little light tap. Right there, sometimes it makes it a little harder to see. Now this you just want to tap, you don't really want to hammer it down in there because you don't want it to be too deep and then where your ridges kind of overlap there you just want to and what that's going to do is that's going to start to uh, give a little shading there to your area you just kind of want to overlap it a little bit to where You don't have a big bunch of lines in there. You want it to be smooth. Okay. Okay. And this you can go back over a little bit here, time and time to. I get. I don't know if you can, how well you can see that or not, but it's kind of. Gives it that little imprint design there, makes it kind of stand out a little bit. We'll keep going down this way a little bit.
go up our M here. Once we get this one done there, you'll be able to see a difference there between the letters. See, when you get into this tooling there, that's not really an area where you want to be in a rush there because you, it's pretty easy to make a mistake there. You just want to make sure that you ride right up on that. That's why you cut it out there. When you cut it out with the knife there, it gives you that little tooled line there where you can kind of have it to follow in there. Now as you rock it back and you tap, it cuts in more of a defined outline there. Um, if you hold it down, it does give you a better, uh, more significant shaded area there. Here we just want the letters to stand out. We don't really need that big pronounced beveling there. Okay, we're just going to finish up our M here. Got it there. if you can how well you can see that or not there but if you can kind of see that design there we've you can see where the the M looks a little more pronounced there than the the N and the P does it looks like it gives it a little more uh, 3d effect there and like I said once you get the stain on there the stain will go into that groove and it'll give you that that uh, outline there and like I said once we go through Put that, put that ink in there. And you can kind of see our difference there. Okay. Hey guys, super fun here. Hey, we're back and we got our design here. All beveled in. I think our memory card got full there for a minute. So we're going to maybe, uh, I don't know where we left off here, but we were taking our bevel around this. 
and then we just took our ink pen and filled it in so if you notice you get a nice strong uh, imprinted pattern and if you feel this it's got a nice little uh, beveled you know where it stands up like a raised lettering kind of effect there okay now we went a little risky here we put our MMP <coughs> excuse me our MMP design on here is because is that if for some reason you get rid of the gun and you know you keep the holster and stuff it may not fit any other guns you know once we wet it and mold it down and get it stitched together and everything um, it's gonna hold the MP9 shield it'll hold the 45 shield um, maybe the 22 I'm not sure because the 22 is a little bit smaller base um, the Taurus PT 111 will probably hold that as well um, but then you don't have your M&P, you know, it's not your M&P style here. So this is what our holster is going to look like. Um, the leather is still wet. We wetted it back down again just to smooth it all out and everything. Um, we got our little M&P design. We got a little cross gun pattern there. So if you go to get rid of the gun, you know, you may want to keep this because um, design is... Uh, you know, you, one person may like it, the other person may not like it. Um, that's why sometimes I'll just use a, a different kind of a, some kind of a pattern or design pattern or something like that with the guns or something like that to where it's kind of universal no matter what gun you put in there. When you start putting the logo thing on there, you know, you're kind of restricting it to your your one gun there. So, But these will fit several different models here. So we've took our little uh, camouflage tool here and we've went around the bevel here. So we've used about four or five different tools here. And like I said, the majority of these you get with your kit, your basic kit if you, you decide you want that. Um, we have a little pairing tool and it's called the pairing tool because it's shaped like a pear. And it's just real smooth, it's polished and everything. And it's just good to go around to get the little rough edges out just to smooth everything down okay and then we have our little beveling tool here now this one's got the little uh, cross the hatch pattern in there so it gives a little kind of a shaded look there a little bit um, the basic one that comes with the kit um, is like this but it's smooth it's it's polished it's not doesn't have the uh, little contours or knurls cut in it there and then we used our little uh, oops, swivel knife. They do make different uh, tops of these that can go on here that you can use to swivel. Uh, there are different kinds of blades that you can get to put in there. But this will cut your pattern into the leather. And then we use this little guy here. These are, and you can get these in like three prong, four prong, six, eight, ten prong. Whatever. You can get them that wide, you know, if you want to. And this is for cutting our stitching holes in. Now the other thing you can get is a, uh, looks like a little pair of pliers, like, like, and it's got a little rotating head on there with different uh, bits in there that you can, it's a hole punch that you can use to punch out your holes with. But for a stitching pattern, you want to hold something in tight there. For the stitching pattern, them holes are a little loose. They work good for lace, but not for stitching. Okay, and then we've got our uh, little practice piece here that we're gonna we're gonna get that sewed on. You can see how different the weather the leather gets when it gets wet there. Uh, we're gonna stitch that on there for our belt loop, so that our finished design. You're gonna have your design on the front. You're gonna have your belt loop here on the back, and we did. Uh, uh, make that at kind of an angle because when you sit on your belt you do want your gun you know lean forward a little bit there so that gives it a little more comfort fit there okay so that's where we are we got our we got our tooling done um, and you can also once you get this done and instead of just using the basic stain pattern because once we we whip that with our ink there a little bit. Once that uh, 
stain goes on there, it will go in down into those cracks and it will bring that pattern out a little bit as well. Um, but you can, if you wanted to, you could take a, uh, um, I've got several paints you can use like the model car paint or the craft paint, any of the acrylic based paints work well with this. And you can actually paint your lettering. Um, you know, if you wanted to make it stand out a little bit more. Um, I did that with one of my hosters. I painted the leathers on it. I had the brown stain and I had the leathers painted black so that it, the leathers would stand out a little bit better. It's just all in what you, you feel comfortable with. But um, these tools, like I said, if you get a basic kit from Tandy Leather, it'll come with these things. With all your basic tools, I think it's about um, 10 or 11 tools that it comes with. Now these guys here, your stamps, you you purchase them separate, and then you can purchase the little stool uh, stool tool to go with it. Um, this actually came with a uh, a letter, an alphabet letter set to where you could stamp, you know, your own. You could put people's names on stuff. You know, you could stamp uh, different things on there. Um, and I just used it for our stamp here. So, and then get your little hammer or a little, uh, these work good because it's a little, uh, uh, this kind of a rosin type plastic, so it kind of absorbs the shock a little bit, but it's good hard, so you get a good firm tap on it, um, whereas if you used a regular, like a claw hammer or something that hammers nails, the metal hammer, um, you're going to get too much of a weight and it's going to make it too heavy. Uh, of a punch there and you could end up messing up your leather so once we get our leather dried uh, we're going to start our stitching we're going to stitch this first because once you stitch the outside and it stitched up on the inside it's real hard to do it once you get this out so any kind of uh, a hook or thing that you're going to do that's going to go on the inside first um, you want to do that first before you stitch the outer rim there Okay, and then also you could choose to use rivets if you wanted to you could put rivets in there To hold it in there a little firmer But I don't like using rivets with the firearm stuff because then you have the metal on the inside here And you don't want to be sticking that in there and having your metal scratch in your gun Okay now on a couple of them I did with the pistol holsters um, As I take a little bit of the uh, the little uh, velcro patches that's got the sticky on the one side there and I use not the little hard surface but the little smoother surface feels like velcro and you can put that in there over the top of those uh, on the inside of those where the rivets are and that keeps them from also keeps it from scratching your gun as well but with the stitching you're not going to have that problem there okay so we're going to let our leather dry out there and uh, we're going to be ready to stitch. Now, sometimes you can do your, if you wanted to, you could do your uh, staining and everything first before you do your stitching. Um, just because you can get a good outside, get your edges, get the inside if you want to do that and stuff. And if you notice on our side, even on the inside panel there where we cut in, uh, you're going to see your patterns there a little bit. So a lot of times you want to do, we may do our staining there before we do our, our lacing up. Just for the uh, the ease of it there to be able to get our inside of here good. Because once you get this stitched on, you're not going to be able to get that inside stained area good. So when we come back, once our leather gets dried out, the next part is going to be our staining. Alright guys, shooting for fun. Stay tuned for our next part. Thanks for watching.